just in the Caribbean success and the value added technology products. I uh, found Igor online and uh, checked this out. Yeah. All right, so I think uh, we should get started and maybe others will join us uh, as we go. Uh, so just to introduce myself, my name is Igor Chigrin. Uh, I'm expert in consult with Win Global. Uh, my background though is international trade, so I started as an international trader. Uh, focused mainly on medical supplies, pharmacy, and medical equipment. Uh, but uh, at some point of time I realized that uh, people in my community started asking me the same questions. How do you engage in uh, international trade, how do you, how you book the trade and so on and so forth. So I realized that uh, well, it's probably the path that I should take and uh, teach more people and explain them how to get into the international trade. And uh, today our topic is uh, selection of the new export markets. Uh, well, uh, your companies are not exceptions uh, because most of the Canadian exports go to the United States, uh, which probably will always be the case, but uh, it's better to strategically, strategically diversify our exports uh, to make sure that we don't depend on one export market. Uh, uh, the question that uh, you probably have is how to actually uh, select the right export market for my product. And there are uh, four steps in the process, and we'll go through them one by one. Uh, the first step is to actually look at where other Canadian companies export your product. Same product that you're making, or uh, if, it, if you're producing a meat product, then maybe some kind of substitute. So, uh, and there is a way to find the list of those export markets for the product, and, it, and it's called United Nations Home Trade Database. So you see it right here on the screen, and in your handouts, uh, there is the um, tutorial on pages 4, 5, and 6. So we're going to go through uh, the tutorial basically right now. So we're going to pick the, the product that you want. And we go, in the end, we're going to see the list of the export markets. So those markets where Canadians export that product. So um, let's let's get started with the database. I show, I'll show you how to navigate. So uh, first of all, when you log in uh, to the database, it's, it's free. You don't have to authorize yourself or something nothing like that. Uh, there are three uh, sections, and you don't change anything in the first two sections. But you'd rather change this the, the third one. So I would recommend to leave the latest here right here and in the field uh, the reporters you have to choose Canada because you want to see where the Canadian products go okay so I'm doing it right now is it, is there, sorry is there a paper copy of this are we following along somewhere or not yeah 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 well you, you can follow this uh, you can just right here you can follow it. so uh, probably yeah right here so uh, we're not changing anything in one and two and we are changing the section three. And this is a little screenshot as well. So we change reporters to Canada. <coughs> now we change partners to all because if you leave the world, then you're not going to get, you, you, you'll just get the aggregate data. But what we'd rather looking for, we're looking for the data by country. So you change the world to all. And you change the trade flow to export. Now, uh, then you need to select uh, the HS code for your product. And the way you do that, well, either uh, I think you know the HS code for your product already because you export to the United States. But if not, you can just start typing the description and uh, it will show you the HS code. So uh, if you remember HS, HS code of your product, you can just give it to me. First, Sorry, maybe I, first, I first few digits, no? Okay, so then uh, then, then let's go with description. So you're, you're what can you remember? Livestock. Livestock equipment, okay. Um, and yours, uh, once again? Uh, Locksmith, uh, lock, uh, Lock hardware. Lock, lock hardware. Okay, let's probably start with something like a lock. Um, oh, it gives quite a lot because there were blocks. Um, okay, let's let's try with cattle. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can find it. Uh, it's just oh, yeah. going to take, yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, it just takes a while, so I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, go under livestock 
livestock. Because uh, if I go on the livestock, uh, livestock equipment. Uh, livestock equipment. Uh, we can actually go through equipment and uh, try to find any agri food related. <coughs> Yeah, it's, it's probably here under machinery and equipment. Yeah, um, setting up the equipment. Uh, it's a hard okay, so for print. And what does the equipment do exactly? Yeah. What does the equipment do exactly? Because it sustains the animal. Ah, okay. So the vet can work on it. Uh -huh. Constrains the animal. Right. Mm -hmm. So is it like a cage, basically? Or? Yeah. Ah, okay. So we yeah, we may we may find some we may find cages or something like that. Is it metal? Uh, yes. Metal product? Okay. We can also try to uh, find the metal products, fabricated metal products. All right, so let's try articles of metal. Is that the right description? Articles of metal? Yeah. I think we found the box. Yeah. Lock boxes. Oh, there you go. Ah. If you go through a couple of failures, it's one of the winners. Mm-hmm. Really, don't be afraid to fail. What's the worst that's going to happen? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, anyway, so uh, so this is how you make the inquiry. And again, when you go uh, when you go back, you'll probably find the HS code. So you just you may just start typing the HS code, and it will give you the, uh, the HS code. So then we hit preview. <coughs> Let's go down a little bit, and then we sort by value. So what we find is that uh, the total market, the total value of the exporting is in this case around uh, 38 million. So that's the total value of the market from Canada yes. being exported. Yes, exactly, exactly. And uh, probably 90 something percent goes to the United States. But we see there are other markets as well. Like for example, Mexico, France, United Kingdom, China and so forth. So. Uh, the way you use this data, uh, you run the inquiry for your product, and then you put the top 10 markets right here. Obviously, it may be the United States, and uh, there's no surprise, but uh, your focus may be on the other export markets. Now, uh, now that you've got the list of the export markets according to the database, uh, the next exercise so, uh, is to actually look at your connections. So the second exercise for you, uh, go back to the exercise list, asks you to uh, write down the names of the people you know and their backgrounds uh, and their international exposure. So uh, it gives you an idea 
where those individuals have been exposed to. The reason you need to know that is because international trade is really about establishing relations and connections. And if you already know somebody from that particular country that Say, the person, uh, say you are focused on Mexican market, and you have a couple of people uh, from Mexico working for you, uh, or uh, some family members. For you. So what you can do, you can later reach out to them and ask them, okay, their, ask them for their connections back home. So that's why you do this exercise, and that's why you put uh, down all the names of the people you know that had some kind of international exposure. Uh, now, the recommendation here is uh, not to go with your Facebook friends or your virtual connections. Uh, go only with those people that you should met in person, done business, ideally you've done business with them. Because, uh, once again, uh, it's all about relationships and connections. Yeah. Even if, as you see, for example, Mexican market is not the top market for a product. But if you know somebody in Mexico who is interested in the product, who may take advantage of the product, then this is the market to go. Yeah. Any questions so far? I've got my code. You, you've got your code? Okay, let, let's run. Let's run your code. So it's 8436. Uh huh. Well, again, no surprise uh, that the United States is the number one export market, but see, Australia, New Zealand, and Brazil, it's kind, it's kind of obvious because, well, they also raise a lot of cattle, yeah. but, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but, but you, you may have wondered, like, why wouldn't they uh, use the products of their own, but no, see, they import this product from Canada quite a lot. The only, the only thing that the database doesn't give you is actually the names of the exporters and the names of the importers. But uh, at least you have an idea of the market size and those markets that are interested in this product. Uh, well, so obviously using the database you can uh, change the exporting countries. You can add the United States here or, or the world if you want uh, to understand what's the global value of the market. So this database will give you a good uh, free intelligence. So to find out the global value of the market, you just report to be the world. Yeah, you, you should. Yeah, well, let's just let's just do it right now. You put the world. Oh, yeah. You can you can only do all here. Oh, I see. <laughs> what it says is the too complex query. <laughs> okay. Um. Interesting. So what it gives you is that uh, actually Canada is the top exporter of this product. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So in the, in the rest of it, that's what the other countries are exporting. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But it doesn't tell you where they're exporting to. It's no, just, but but you can yeah, but, uh, no, they, they don't. But uh, what you can you just can just change the settings and yes. let's say yes. uh, put okay. the United States yeah. here and the all countries here and run the run the query. That's an interesting tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty accurate data. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because all United Nations members, they report back to the country. Okay. And it's, these data are based on the uh, customs statistics. So it's pretty accurate. Well, so going forward, a few, a few other exercises that you do in order to get your list of your priority export market system. Uh, you actually look into yourself, your own experience, your own exposure. You list all the markets where you personally have been exposed to. Uh, maybe you've studied somewhere. Maybe you go, uh, you went to a few markets and have done business with a few, in a few markets. 
uh, maybe you um, are familiar with the business culture in certain markets. Let's say uh, you know how to negotiate in the Middle East, for example. So you can add a couple of Middle Eastern countries that may also uh, be on your list. Uh, and the final exercise is that once you have looked at, into the country database, you looked at your connections and you looked at your yourself, basically. Now you look into your product. And the exercise, in the exercise four, you list uh, those export markets where you think that your product is the most competitive. To the best of your knowledge, your product is the most competitive. Now, when we talk about the competitiveness, it's very important to understand that you don't necessarily have to consider the price as the only merit of competitiveness. Because your product may be more expensive than the product made elsewhere, let's say in Asia, but your product may be of higher quality, it may last longer, you may provide a unique guarantee, it may obviously, I'm pretty sure, it will be a higher quality. So you look into those um, features and benefits of the product beyond the price in order to uh, uh, strengthen your, in order, to make, in order to focus on those benefits and focus uh, and, 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 and offer those benefits versus price. And so in the exercise for uh, you list those markets that you think appreciate those values the most. If it's price, then it's fine. You list those markets that appreciate low lowest price. Uh, and there's there's plenty of those markets, but uh, pretty sure your product you compete not necessarily on price, but on uh, probably the quality and the benefits. So list those markets that rather value the quality, value the benefit, value the longevity of the product value the total cost of ownership of the product in the exercise here. And the exercise five is the summary of all the previous exercises. So what you do, you list uh, the export markets that appear the most on the previous exercises, and you count how many times they appear. So obviously the more times the market appears on your list, then uh, the more likely that market is your priority. And by completing the exercise, what you'll get is the list of the potential export market. Uh, once again, number one will be the yes, and it's fine. But uh, this exercise gives you the uh, real clue of which other export markets are available. Uh, once again, as you see, uh, if the export market is if the export market you're targeting is large, but you don't necessarily have the connections over there then it's harder for you to penetrate that market versus a smaller market where you have some sort of connection. So that's why we consider all of those different uh, aspects of the export market selection, including the product, the volume of the export market, your personal experience and connections, and that of your friends, family, or co-workers. Uh, we have time, so you're more than welcome to start doing the exercise. And uh, perhaps we can uh, do convenient in five minutes. And so, you're with uh, countries other than the US. Mm -hmm. What I'm finding is they all want to deal in US dollars. And that's fairly typical. Mm -hmm. that yeah, sort of unless, a, unless you deal with Europe yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. or another uh, country with a much stronger currency, uh, free trade currency. Probably the most common currency yeah. in the world, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they'd rather nominate uh, <clears throat> US dollars versus their local currency. Yeah. 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 So, have you, uh, have you done the, any attempts to sell elsewhere than you How did that go for you? Actually, Iceland and Norway. Oh yeah, interesting. And again, it's a personal connection. Uh huh. That, yeah. You know, established that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's amazing how, out of the middle of nowhere, that connection can make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah, that's that's, that's exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a huge market, but no, it's a very small market. But uh, <laughs> as, yeah. as long as you have the connection yeah. there, it's a new market for yeah. you. Yeah, it just made me realize that you know you can penetrate those markets. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how it happens. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what, you know, what can you help us about freight? What's, what's yeah. the best way to freight stuff across? 
Oh, uh, there's no shortage of great forwarders in Canada. So uh, my best recommendation is to uh, just reach out to uh, as many freight forwarders as you as you can. Typically, three, four is enough, and request them for flow. And then basically they will explain you the best way to ship the product, depending on your situation. Let's say if you need something urgent, they will likely offer you air freight, which will be more expensive, but, but fast. Uh, or if, it, if, if the timing is not constrained, you'll probably be shipping by boat. Taking long, it will take longer, but uh, the fee will obviously be much less than the kind of truck that Or the truck. I heard somewhere that about a third of the containers going back to the, like China, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. amazing. I mean, it, yeah, like yeah. This is true. This is, this is true, yeah. Pretty good break. <laughs> this is true. Sure. Yeah. You can get cars on those containers for nuts to nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it China or is there other countries? Yeah, it's China. 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 Yeah. So if, if you want to get anything to eat, the ship's going anyways, right? Yeah. Actually, I guess you could go from Asia to any. Yeah, pretty well. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, well, uh, once again, if you want to take the exercise, do the exercise now or feel free. If uh, you want to do it in your spare time, please yeah, do. You know, I think it's good. I like to do it at yeah, the yeah. business with, with the team. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, no, it's very, this is very helpful tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and if you're stuck, let me know. Uh, I've got my cards and I'm really happy to. Where are you based out of? Uh, based out of uh, Ontario, Toronto, the Toronto region. Uh, but it's not my first visit uh, to Edmonton. I've done some work with uh, the um, Alberta Agriculture and Forestry for agri food exporters in Alberta. So, I'm kind of familiar with agri food uh, uh, market, but uh, now it's a good opportunity to meet the manufacturers. Well, that's, that's great. Thank you so much. Okay, well, my pleasure. Thanks for coming. Appreciate that. So, what, what, what's your vision? What are you going to grow? What am I going to do? What do you, well, yeah, what's your plans? I'm still.